Art Blakey started playing piano, correct? Yes. Yeah, and you originally a trumpet player. No, I was originally oh. a drummer. Oh, okay. But I, I did start studying trumpet in the fourth grade. I had a cousin who lived in Brooklyn and had a great reputation as the general of jazz in Brooklyn named Cyril Green. And he's actually in a photo shot in the Lee Morgan documentary, they called him Morgan. There's a picture where they're talking about Lee Morgan in the Jazzmobile and working with all the trumpet players. The tallest guy in that picture was my cousin Cyril. And, and, and uh, you know, so he's the one that turned me on the trumpet. As a matter of fact, <laughs> He's a ball. He was a. He ended up being a ball head trumpet player that did taekwondo. And now I'm a ball head drummer that plays trumpet and does taekwondo. So, you know, fulfilling the prophecy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you think it was about you that made Art take you under his wing? Oh, it's hard for me to speak for him. Mm-hmm. I do know that I was wholly dedicated to his approach and style, um, almost to a point where. At that time, people were teasing me about it, you know, and calling me Baby Boo, you know, and which, you know, as far as I'm concerned, was completely fine as long as I was baby somebody who could play. <laughs> I didn't care, you know what I mean? Baby Boo, Baby Mac, Baby somebody who could swing. It was fine with me. When Art Blakey talked about the music that he played, he always used the term, I, I believe. Yeah. I believe in this music. But what did he give you in terms of that belief? He taught me that family was important. He taught me that um, jazz was American music. You know, whatever name you want to call it, BAM, African-American classical music, jazz. uh, It's American. And it's African-American. So it's not African, you know, and it's not apple pie America. It's collard greens America. And without that part of the American experience, you can't have that. One of the most important things he taught me about playing was that you never know when the last time you play your instrument is going to be. So always play like it's the last time you're going to play. Because you can step off the curb and get hit by New York City taxi. And if you were late and looking raggedy and didn't know the music, then that's how, that's how you're going to be remembered. You know, first impressions and last impressions are, are the impressions that people take away you know, from you. So, yeah. What did it mean for you as an artist to follow in the footsteps of um, the, you know, trumpet matches like Freddie Hubbard, Lee Morgan, and Woody Shaw, and to contribute to that, that legacy in The Messengers? Yeah, the, the thing about... The thing about uh, being a jazz messenger is that you're, you know, you're forever a part of this incredible chain, you know, of, of, of influence. All the trumpet players that I wanted to style myself after, you know, as a young musician had played with either Horace Silver or Art Blakey pretty much. I mean, that kind of runs the gamut, you know, from, from Clifford Brown to to Freddie Hubbard, to Woody Shaw, to, you know, everybody. It's still, 30 years later, it's, it's a big responsibility, you know, to, to stay true to, to that, you know. I mean, it's not a problem for me to, to straight stay true to tradition because I respect tradition very much, even though, you know, I'm very much of, want to be of the time that I'm living in, you know, as long as I'm living. And, and um, you know, contribute to it. What do you feel is the role of jazz in pushing civil rights forward? I mean, I think that's a really great point to remind us that jazz musicians were at the forefront of articulating things about racial justice and racial inequality. In the jazz community, the music of the messengers inspired so many people to pick up instruments and play. How important is it that this music continues to be played and performed? Well, I think it's very important, you know, especially for uh, young younger musicians, so they 
know the stuff that they're listening to now kind of came from, or at least the roots of it, and and give them, you know, some um, alternatives, some things to play. How would you describe your friendship and your connection with Ralph Peterson? Wow, well, I've known Ralph a long time. <laughs> Back when he was uh, out at OTB, and uh, with, I think it was Kenny Garrett was in it, and um, Mike Mossman, and, and really, really nice. Uh, it was Harry Chicken. I think it was playing piano with them. Mm. But um, yeah, it was, it was when I, that's when I started, met him right around that time period. In, here in New York, and you know he's, you know we've been through a lot together, and he's uh, really uh, an inspiration. You know, dealing with all the issues he's dealing with now, and and you know he's just moving forward, and his, his creed is onward and upward. <laughs> <laughs> and what can you tell me about your friendship with Ralph Peterson? Oh yeah, Ralph, we go way back. He, I, I met him, um, he actually um, came to, to live in the house I was living in, the apartment I was living in in Brooklyn, because he was friends with um, uh, Michael Mossman, trumpet player, and they had a band called Out of the Blue. And what is it like bringing new material and playing it in the Messenger style? Like like this recording? Yes. Like Well, it's been fun. Um, we got the music ahead of time, so I uh, practiced it at home. Try to figure out what to, what to play that, that will be good musically, and um, and it's just it's just uh, exciting because it's fresh, and um, I got to think of something good to play, you know. So I, I practice it at home and uh, try to figure out the, you know, the chords and the rhythms, and uh, I, I don't I don't play the melody. I play like the rhythm section, so I got to figure out rhythmically and uh, harmonically what's happening and what's find the right notes to play you know and what can you tell me about your friendship with Ralph Peterson he uh, hired me for his trio um, yeah, yeah trio we did a, a trio record with Jerry Allen he told Art about me too you know, to watch he should hire me you know so I am indebted to Ralph for that he's a warm guy and Big heart, and it's been a great Venus for me.